UK manufacturer Meridian is well known for their fantastic and costly equipment. So what about a 300 euro Meridian DAC that promises to do MQA as well? Welcome back to the HB channel. Meridian has done extensive research on digital audio ever since digital audio came to the home. They are specialists in lossless audio encoding, decoding, digital signal processing and many more. For instance Dolby True HD uses Meridian's compression technology. Their implementation of the so-called apodizing reconstruction filters is rather popular in the high-end market. But let's first look at the device on test. The housing is an extruded oval aluminium tubing with plastic caps on both ends. On one end you find a line out and a headphone out on 3.5 mm jacks and on the other end you find a mini USB input. A 16 cm short USB A to mini USB cable is supplied to connect the explorer to the computer. I like this solution better than having a USB A connector mounted on the deck itself since when used directly connected to the computer there will be a lot of mechanical stress on it. The top holds three small LEDs that indicate single, double and quadruple sampling rates. Despite rumors on the web, the Explorer 2 only decodes PCM up to 192 kHz, DSD is not supported. You can, of course, have your player software convert DSD to PCM24192. The Explorer 2 will do MQA decoding as soon as it hits the market. It will need a software update to do so, but that will be a simple procedure. MQA reduces time smearing, even including that of the recording equipment. It was announced in December 2014, but now, December 2015, when this show was recorded, it's not clear when it will hit the market. See my two videos on MQA. If you view this video in a browser, you can click the link in the right top corner. Otherwise go to youtube.com slash c slash the Hans Beekhuizen channel. There you find all the videos I have published, including those on MQA. As always, you can skip the tech by jumping to the timecode below. Since the Explorer 2 on test here can't be opened, there's nothing I can say about the components used. There is, however, much to say about this apodizing filter used by Meridian. Not that I will lose myself in a technical explanation. You can't lose what you don't have, do you? But I'll try to give you a feel of it. The Meridian apodizing filter is basically a windowed linear phase filter. The latter part is easy to understand. Linear phase means that the total audio spectrum travels through a device in the same time instead of the high frequencies arriving later than the low frequencies or vice versa. The windowing bit is harder to imagine, but I'll try. And if there are people around that have a more clear explanation, please let me know and I'll pass it on to the viewers. Windowing lets the filter look at the signal in time through a window, where the middle of the window is more clear than the signs. So the signal that has passed the center is weighted less than the signal in the center. The same goes for the signal that soon will arrive at the center. One of the consequences of apodizing filters is a slight roll off at the high frequencies, meaning that the CD quality audio files might lose the top end of the 20 kHz signal. Therefore Meridian upsamples the CD signal to twice the sampling rate and then apply the apodizing filter. Now there will be a slight roll off at 40 kHz. That will be inaudible since our ears don't go that far and there is no music energy anyway. Why all the trouble? Well, almost all digital filters cause pre-ringing, signals that precede the ori original signal. That's very unnatural and distorts transients noticeably. The Meridian apodizing filter does not cause any pre-ringing at the expense of a bit more post-ringing. Post-ringing also is a byproduct of filtering, but will normally be masked by the original signal that's far stronger. So from a psycho-acoustical point of view, the apodizing filters make a lot of sense. Not that everyone agrees. 
The developer of the Watts transient aligned filter in cord converters, Rob Watts, say that if you use a million tap filter the ringing is gone without putting the problem elsewhere. Except that this, for now, is not achievable. Its top design, the 11,000 euro cord Dave, now has 164,000 taps. Although Meridian and Cord disagree wholeheartedly on this, I think they both excel at impulse response. Both use their own filter code in converter chips they program themselves. A far more complex way than buying off the shelf DA converter chips from Burr Brown, Asai KC, ESS and the like. This also means that I can say just a little bit about the components used. There at least must be an FPGA, the programmable chip used for the filtering. There's not much to say about using the Meridian Explorer 2. It is USB Audio Profile 2 compatible, meaning it will plug and play with any computer as long as the USB port can provide enough current and if it's not running Windows. The needed Windows driver is available from the Meridian website. There you also find instructions to have Windows work bit perfect. Since Explorer 2 has no other inputs, connecting a CD player, game console or set top box is not possible. As far as the power is concerned, the Explorer draws 2.5 watts, which is easy for normal computers. For smartphones and tablets it's a different story. Both my iPhone 6 and iPad Air 2 gave a warning that it drew too much power. I read on the web the same thing applies to Android products. There are tricks to use a power bank and a split cable to overcome this, which I haven't tried. The headphone output was more than able to drive my AudioQuest Nighthawk headset. No surprise since the 25 ohm drivers are fairly sensitive. The playback level could be set from the computer. When the line output is used, the headphone amp is switched off and there is no volume control. The sound is different to most if not all converters in this class. It sounds more relaxed, bass lines have more tonality and piano attacks prove the appodizing filter to function. I have always thought this type of sound to be everyone's dream since people around me loved it too. Still there are people that do not like it, they find it too laid back. Some say that it's the difference between audiophile listeners and the rest of the world. That's ok, there is no truth, only fair approximations. Some like sushi, others like curries, I like both as might be obvious. But if you belong to the audiophile side and are searching for an affordable USB DA converter, seriously consider the Explorer 2. The main limitation is the less perfect mid-highs that cause female voices and brass to be a tad harsh, in absolute sense that is. But that's more than compensated for by the overall openness and relaxed sound. Therefore the Explorer 2 is more than sufficient for my sub 1000 euro set 3 and even more than acceptable on the lower end of my sub 3000 euro set 2. Just like the iFi Micro iDeck 2 although clearly different in character. A portable DA converter costing only 300 euros having high end aspirations and realizing them for a fair bit. That's what the Meridian Explorer 2 brings us December 2015. Rumor has it that the CES of January 2016 might bring the rollout of MQA, starting with the streaming services like Tidal, offering up to 24 bit 192 kHz audio files in MQA encoding. Until then you buy a very nice DA converter and who knows what happens after the introduction of MQA. I'll keep following MQA so if you want to remain informed, subscribe to this channel, follow my Facebook or Google Plus page or my Twitter account. You can also post questions there, you'll find the information below this video in YouTube. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up and tell your friends on the web about it. I am Hans Beekhuizen for the HB channel. Thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.